You know, it's interesting about the use of theory as an epistemic down player is that it's inspired a whole class of responses that want to contest this usage, that insist on framing it instead as an epistemic up player. Here's an example. This is from a 2013 blog post on scientificamerican.com. Just a theory, seven misused science words. The goal in this article was to identify words that are commonly used by the public in one way, but are used by scientists in a different way. And these different meanings raise problems for communicating science to the public. One of these problematic words is theory. Here's a quote. Climate change deniers and creationists have deployed the word theory to cast doubt on climate change and evolution. It's as though it weren't true because it's just a theory, Elias said. That's despite the fact that an overwhelming amount of evidence supports both human-caused climate change and Darwin's theory of evolution. Good point, but look at the next paragraph. Again, this is a quote from the article. Part of the problem is that the word theory means something very different in lay language than it does in science. A scientific theory is an explanation of some aspect of the natural world that has been substantiated through repeated experiments or testing. But to the average Jane or Joe, a theory is just an idea that lives in someone's head rather than an explanation rooted in experiment and testing. So let's pull out this definition. This is an example of an epistemically loaded definition of the term theory, but this time it's an epistemic up player, not a down player. This way of using the term theory defines it as something that has been substantiated through repeated experiments or testing. You see this sort of thing all the time in these kinds of articles that try to correct what they take to be public misunderstandings of scientific terminology. And it's especially common on sites that promote the teaching of evolution. Here's another one. This URL for this site is literally notjustatheory.com. Look at this second paragraph. Quote, the theory of evolution is a theory, but guess what? When scientists use the word theory, it has a different meaning to normal everyday use. That's right, it all comes down to multiple meanings of the word theory. Jump to the third paragraph. In everyday use, theory means a guess or a hunch, something that maybe needs proof. In science, a theory is not a guess, not a hunch. It's a well-substantiated, well-supported, well-documented explanation of our observations. It ties together all the facts about something, providing an explanation that fits all the observations and can be used to make predictions. In science, theory is the ultimate goal. It's as close to proven as anything in science can be. Here's another one. This is off the website of the National Center for Science Education, which is largely focused on promoting science literacy on the topics of evolution and climate change. And of course, they have their own article that tries to legislate the use of scientific terminology. I'll come back to these other definitions in later videos because they're good examples, but let's look at their definition of theory. Theory. In science, a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that can incorporate facts, laws, inferences, and tested hypotheses. Calling it well-substantiated makes it an epistemically loaded up player. Here's another one, similar to other definitions we've seen. Look at the bullet point on the bottom. A theory is confirmed by all available evidence, such that it can be used to predict new as yet unobserved phenomena. Epistemic up player. I could go on all day listing examples like these. Here's the last one I'll show you. A scientific theory consists of one or more hypotheses that have been supported by repeated testing. These are one of the pinnacles of science and are widely accepted in the scientific community as being true. Now, the only point I want to make in this video is to show you that people do actually use the term theory in this way. And to substantiate my point that we do have these two types of epistemically loaded usage of theory in circulation. There's the downplaying version that's expressed when we use an expression like, it's just a theory. And there's an upplaying version that's often used specifically by pro-science advocates trying to distinguish between common usage of theory, which is downplaying, and what they regard as properly scientific usage, which is upplaying. Now, as we'll see as we go along, I think that this whole idea of trying to legislate a single correct use of these terms is misguided. Scientists actually use these terms in all these different ways. 
But there's a more serious problem with these epistemically loaded definitions. And it's a problem that helps us to see why we need an epistemically neutral definition. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.